This week, we have one of the most feared names in professional fishing. From Park Hill, Oklahoma, Jason Christie on... I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Welcome one, welcome all friends, family, fishing freaks, whoever you are. It is hump day. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Hard to believe this is the last full week in January. I mean, time is speeding up because I'm looking at my calendar. I'm, we're 15 days away from the first day of the Elite Series. And we're like 37 days away from the first day of the Bassmaster Classic. So uh, for those of you having some cabin fever, don't worry. Relief is coming in a big, big way very, very soon. It's also the most wonderful time of the year if you are a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Man, that was probably... Now, just bear with me. And I know some of the viewers of this show are not big NFL fans. Um, but a lot of you are, and I am... Uh, this past weekend was one of the greatest weekends in professional football. I mean, all four games were incredible. Um, heartbreaker loss for the Bills. I mean, I got a lot of friends that are Bills fans. I feel for you guys. I mean, that was a war, and um, that rule sucks. The overtime rule sucks. I'll give you that. We got screwed by it a few years ago. Um, the first trip that the Chiefs should have taken to the Super Bowl, or the Patrick Mahomes Chiefs anyways, should have taken to the Super Bowl, was derailed because we went into overtime with the Patriots and Tom Brady marched down, scored a touchdown, so Patrick Mahomes didn't get to touch the ball. So that sucks. And here's a little insider news that some of you might not know. The Chiefs actually rallied in the offseason, put a whole petition together and said, hey, we need to change this rule so future teams don't get screwed by it. None of the teams supported them. So hopefully the world will realize how crazy that is and um, change it in the future. But regardless, the Chiefs won fair and square. We all knew the rules when we went into the game. I feel for my Bills fans. Um, your back needs a rest anyways, for those of you that jump on tables. So so take a, take a rest. The best part is, if you're a Bills fan, a Chiefs fan, and a lot of teams right now, really, uh, Cincinnati, just so many teams in the AFC have an incredible future. I, I literally, I was thinking that the whole way through the game. I'm watching Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes battle it out, and I'm like, how did this become my team? Like, how lucky am I? Like, I was a Chiefs fan for my whole life. They sucked for the majority of it. The last four years have been incredible, and um, I don't think it's slowing down anytime soon. I mean, we're going to see Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and all those great young quarterbacks battle for a lot of years to come. So it's a good time to be a football fan and uh, a little better to be a Chiefs fan. But we'll see how this weekend goes. I mean, it's one game at a time. And if these playoffs hasn't proved anything, it doesn't matter what it says on paper. Both number one seeds have been eliminated. You know, anybody can win. And especially uh, the Bengals are kind of scary just because on paper, I don't think that they hang with the Chiefs at all. But I think it doesn't matter. If you've watched Joe Burrow play the last little while, he is a man possessed. And and Chase, number one on the team, and the number one receiver is ridiculous. His magnetic hands or something. It's like you throw it up, and if he's anywhere near it, look, it sticks to his hands. But enough about football before I upset you all, because we have an incredible guest this week. And um, this is one I've been looking forward to. This is one that... So many of you have reached out and said, can you have this dude on? Because Jason Christie is probably, he's one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most un, that's not even a word, ununderstood or misunderstood anglers that there is out there. I mean, he, not because he says something wrong or right, it's just because the more I know Jason Christie, the more I feel like I don't know him. He's got kind of that aura around him. I mean, I've always compared him. He and in our industry, in my opinion, he's our Clint Eastwood. Like, not 90-year-old Clint Eastwood. I'm talking young, handsome, tall, and scares the crap out of you. Ladies love him. Men fear him. And, and he can intimidate you with just a smile, um, which, which is a unique characteristic. Most people can't smile at you and intimidate you at the same time. But he's a great dude. 
And uh, he got into this just because he loves fishing. And, um, and here's the kicker. You're going to see this uh, during this show. You're going to see above his head, there's a chalkboard that writes Chiefs on it. Well, Christy is, uh, his fiance, Shanna, is a huge Chiefs fan. A lady of impeccable taste, cl- clearly. Um, so I guess she had written there. And as we got through the interview, I'll be honest, it, during that game last weekend, with 13 seconds left, I was like, oh, good googly moogly. This sign above Jason Christie is, is going to be very embarrassing to put up this week if the Bills had a won. But, but the, the, the Bills didn't win. The Chiefs won. And let's have some fun with the one and only Jason Christie. Jason Christie, I appreciate you doing this. What is this time of year for you? Like, I mean, a few weeks before season starts, is this excitement? Is it stress? What is it? Um, Anxiety. It's, uh, you know, I, I got the camo for a reason. I've been in the woods for pretty, pretty much three months. And, uh, you know, right now, my day, my day to day consisted of trying to get a boat, you know, trying to get everything rigged, trying to get it wrapped. I have a new 22 Tundra sitting out there in the shop that I would love to drive to Florida and the classic, but more than likely it's not going to get to go. There's no aftermarket parts. Uh. Can't get tires. I mean, it came with tires, you know, but you can't get all of that stuff, but that's my life is right now. It's just trying to, today I was on email all day, seeing where my line order is, seeing where my, rain gear is you know is everything going to make it is it going to ship here is it going to ship to florida you know it's just it's crazy and a lot of us are doing that right now but you know when that first cast uh is made it'll all kind of settle out but it's there's a lot of anxiety in this house right now so is that a feeling you enjoy or is it just like i want to be done and i want to be to where i I, I, what i want to do you know um the person that was most organized and I, you know, I can't find another word, but anal about their stuff is Aaron was Aaron. Oh yeah. I mean, and, and I think that I'm second to him and a lot of people probably wouldn't, wouldn't guess that. But when I go, I want everything in its place because, you know, I have to try really hard at fishing, no matter what people think. Like I got, you know, it's, it's my job's hard enough and I don't need something not right. You know, all the variables I want taken care of before I start casting. And and do I enjoy it? You know, it, it kind of, I've done it enough now, the process starts. But, I mean, it can, it can get pretty stressful, you know. I mean, you're dealing with, I deal with 14, 16 different companies. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to get all of the stuff. And, and not only are those companies dealing with me, you know, for instance, AFCO, they're dealing with you. They're dealing with all these other guys. So. You know, you're just trying to get all of the product in. And then, of course, the times that we're in right now, you know, you may you, you may get something you may not. So, so far, everything is good. You know, I, I love having my boat. My deadline is always December 1st. Okay. No. I don't know, <laughs> what, I don't know what today is, but I'm nowhere ready to leave this house. So, we'll see. We'll see in Palatka if I'm fishing out of a new boat or or the the same boat I fished out of last year. Do you think this year, I mean, not just you, but the entire field, do you think we'll see more second year boats on tour to kick off than we've ever seen in boats without proper electronics and all sorts of stuff? Yep, I think you will. I, I, uh, I've heard rumors of a couple of guys that they don't have a boat, you know, and they don't have an engine. Um, not because of anything bad, they just... You know, I, I always try to order first. I always have been that way. And I did this year. I ordered first. <laughs> and it's January, whatever it is, and, and I don't have my boat ready to go. So some of these guys that waited later, you know, unless they can pull some strings, uh, yeah, we're going to see some boats that have some scratches on them already whenever we take off at St. John's. Be an anal about your equipment, as you put it. And- is that, did that, was that how you've always been? Or was there a season in the past where you just didn't have a lot of stuff? No, I think it's just, 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, being where I'm at over the years, I know that I have to try harder than most people. I mean, that not most people, but then a lot of people do. There's, I mean, I'm a hard worker. I may not be the smartest guy out there, but you're not going to outwork me. And that's kind of with preparation and stuff. I want all of my stuff um, dialed in, you know, on everything right. I want fresh line. You know, if I'm throwing a spinnerbait, I want six backups there so I don't have to waste five seconds during the day. That's just how I've always been. And that, you know, if I say five seconds here, three minutes there, you know, if I get an extra five minutes a day, that might be another fish. Uh, and just, that's just the way I've been. That's kind of the way I remember going fishing with my uncle and every time, no matter if it was a hundred degrees or 25 degrees, we got out of that water and we took a rag and we wiped the boat off and stuff. And I don't wipe my boat off, but um, you know, I, I just want everything to be, I think a boat runs flat faster if it's clean. I mean, have you ever heard that before? Yeah, sure. Makes sense. I mean, yeah, it should. I, I don't want anything laying in the, in the floor. If you're a marshal or if you're a co-angler in my boat, I would like for you to put your stuff in the box. You know, if I got to wrestle a fish around, I just don't want to, you know, I want everything in its place. I've just always been that way. So when you like, have you ever looked in like Matt Robertson's boat or anything like that? Where <laughs> no, but I could only imagine, you know, you know, like I've, I've, uh, I've talked to Hackney quite a bit when we take off and, and, uh, you know, he's, he doesn't seem to be the most organized, but he still catches the heck out of them. So, but every guy's different. You know what I mean? I mean, I may look over there and, and whoever's boat it is, it may not be as organized as mine, but that might be the most organized for them that day. You know, yeah. I mean? everybody's different. So everybody's got the different way things work. And the guy you just mentioned, first of all, I'll ask you a question. I've never asked you this before. Um, and maybe I should have. I'd be better at my job if I had of. But when I introduce you, I introduce you as one of the most feared men in professional bass fishing. You like that or dislike that? Um, I like it when I'm catching them. Okay. You know, I, lo I love it when I catch them. You know, we talk about it and I've got, I've gotten this reputation on the water as being intimidating. Do I like that? I kind of like it because, you know, these kids and stuff are running around. I know that they feel it. I can feel it. It's like a big buck walking into the field, you know, even though that buck across the field might be as big as me or bigger. You know, it, sometimes you can bluff them. And, <laughs> and I, a lot of those kids, I, I've kind of got the bluff. And I don't know where it came from. I've not done anything. You know, I think it's just reputation. But, you know, then and then whenever you, you know, you say that, you call me that. And I have the day before had a bad day or the event before, you know, it makes me like maybe I'm not the most feared person. I don't know if that feared person is coming from on the water altercations or from fishing. So maybe I'll just switch back and forth based on how I'm fishing. No, but, but I'll be honest where it came from. It came from people's reaction when you came to the elite series, I'll be totally honest. I mean, it is the most, everything I like, I don't, I never sit there and think, what will I say when Christy comes through? You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not that smart or professional, I guess, yeah. but well, and I don't even know when the first time I said it, but it made sense to me because that was the reaction I felt from it. Like no pro angler is ever going to say, I'm scared Christy's coming here, but there you see the look in the face. And, and I, to me, I think fear and a competitive thing, that that's a good thing. You, you know what I mean? Like, and I would say, even when you don't catch him, you might feel like it doesn't fit, but I bet you, if you ask any of those other dudes in the lineup, are you still worried about Christy? They're yeah. just as worried after a day you don't catch it. Well, the year that you're talking about that I came, you know, I, I, I um, it was a really, really good year. I won three events. So I can kind of see where you got that. And that was, gosh, I'd like to have another one of those years. Of course, that was with two, I was fishing two events or two tournament trails. Then. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to hit two or three another time, another year. What, what does that feel like? Compared to, I mean, last year was a great year. You won a tournament, you know, you, you, 
there's nothing wrong with like if you do that every year you're happy i'm sure uh, if you do that every year you go down in history you oh know? yeah if you do that every other year you go down in history um you know as far as that stretch like that 13 stretch you know that's just something that john cox would probably agree with like that was the most grueling busy year that i had ever had i mean you know i didn't do anything other than fish i can remember a stretch a stretch 28 days in a row that i fished with the exception of one day and that one day i drove like 12 hours because we had four events in a row and i made the cut every day except or the last day every every day except one but the good thing about it was all i was doing was fishing I mean, I was thinking about fishing when I was sleeping and, and, uh, you know, I caught them good. I got in a, in a really good groove and man, you can't change that, especially to win two back to back, you know, one week or the next week and then win another month later. It just, uh, you know, and it, like you said, I was coming to the elite series. A lot of those guys were intimidating to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, whenever you kind of bounce into the scene and you, uh, well, I'm here, you know, uh, and of course I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't expect that to happen, but gosh, I'm glad it did. You acted like you totally expected it. Yeah. I mean, no, I, not, not at all. But, but, but I, what I mean by that is you don't, I mean, it never looks like you're shocked when you catch them. <laughs> I mean, it, who intimidated you? You said you were intimidated when, when you were, when you were a buck walking into the elite series, what, what guys intimidated you? Um, I'll tell you, there's something about one guy, like nobody really intimidated me and nobody, I mean, as far as the fishing, yeah. but there is just something about Hackney that he's just a scary person in the fact that, you know what, <laughs> and I mean, fishing wise, like there's not a single one of them that I'm scared of. So yeah. I don't need to know that. But as far as fishing wise, he just, know, he's, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. I mean, he's going to have a dadgum jig tied on and probably two or three of them. And he, if, if he remotely gets in the groove in that event, he's, I mean, he's just, he's just a dangerous person fishing and, and uh, he's so sneaky. Like he is so, so sneaky. I, uh, you know, it's weird that I, I hardly ever see him in practice, hardly ever see him in practice. And I really don't see him a lot in the tournament, but that guy lands on him. He's, he's around him a lot of time during the, uh, the event. He may not, you know, win obviously, or finish in the top five, but if it, he's, he's never just dumbfounded. Like I was the last event last year at, in New York where I went out, he, you're not going to ever see him doing that. He might be around him. He may not catch him as good as everybody else sometimes, but he, he knows what's going on. What do you mean he's sneaky? And just, just before you answer that, you know, when you said you don't know why people think you're intimidating, it's because if you watch that last answer in the middle of it, for no particular reason, you stop to let, make the point. I'm not intimidated by one of them. Just make that clear. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> but he has the fact that, he, 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 you just, I just never seen. And then, and it's like he, he shows up in the most random places. I don't remember what event it was last year, but I remember in practice, I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting bit. And the last day of practice, I roll into a creek and it's raining and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get nervous because I don't have anything going. And I look up at the hotel on the bank. You know who's truck and boats sitting at the hotel and never moved all day? Hackneys. Uh-huh. You know, and that's a guy right, I mean, that right there, you're just like, God gum it. See, it only took a day or two for him to, he's not even fishing today. Uh, and it's just stuff like that. He, he, I feel like that I can drive through a creek and I got to fish it to understand it. That guy can drive through it and never even get the boat off pad and know what's going on. So he just, uh, I like the heck out of him. He's, and he's, he's, I don't know how much you've talked to him, you know, off out to the side. Yeah. Super smart. Very smart. Yeah. About a lot of things. I mean, fishing, outdoors, business. He is really, really smart guy. So 
you know, I think it's just a combination of all of that and just that look that he has. You know? <laughs> and he's not scared to speak his mind. And that's what I like the most about it. Yeah. No, he, he's a great guy. And, and I mean, if I had to say the two most intimidating guys, if I did a poll, like we did Family Feud, who are you, you, and you and Hackney is the two probably most intimidating people on tour. Do you guys ever use, I mean, maybe you're not intimidating, but do you ever use the perception that you are intimidating during competition? Well, yeah, you have to, I think. I mean, if you don't, why would you, I mean, yeah, like if I pull in, yeah, I'm going to fish where I want to fish. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to cut somebody off, but I'm going to pull in and do what I'm going to do. You know, I don't see other people. You know, a lot of guys will be like, I saw you today. And I'm like, well, I didn't see you. You know, probably because I wasn't looking. You know, I'm looking right there at the end of the bait. So, yeah, Hackney, he's a scary one. And there's really not even a close, you know, it's not even close to anybody else. Uh but we have a good group of – we have a really good group of guys. How different do you – I mean, and I don't even know if that's a fair question, but you fished the elites before and then to come mm -hmm. back to the elites. And, and this is not dirtying anybody, but is is there a difference? To, or is, is it the same old, same old? No, I think it's – as far as – I think it's the same. Uh, and this, like you said, no disrespect to those guys, but it's like, you know, it's back in the day whenever – you know, we were all fishing bass, and then there was the FLW guys, and we all came together and fished TTBC and stuff yeah. like that. It was always, you know, you take these five guys and these five, and, and they just, they found their spot. I mean, of course, you're going to have guys that's going to do good consistently, but you never knew who was going to catch them. I mean, a lot of these guys can catch them and, and on both sides, and, and uh, I just, you know, I enjoy – I really, really enjoy where I'm at. We enjoy. I, I, I hope that you saw that whenever I came back. I just, I enjoy where I'm at. And it's no disrespect. I just enjoy where I'm at. And I, I think that that's only normal. You know what I mean? And that's not, I mean, I think what happened a few years ago is one of the weirdest things because you've got a group of people who avoided that kind of decision mm -hmm. <laughs> at some point in their life, you were a coach and you said, I just need to follow my dreams. And, and I was a bartender and I need to follow. And everybody needed to, but you got a group of people who made a decision to avoid business decisions and they got all stuck in a business decision. And that's not what you ever chased in the beginning. I mean, I think most people, when they get into it, it's just, they just want to make a living fishing. That's, that's the goal and the dream. And that was my intent the whole time. I just wanted to fish. And yeah. I said, like, I just want to fish all of the other stuff. You know, so many interviews, so many questions. Why, 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 why? Dude, it doesn't matter. I just no. want to fish. And uh, if anything, if anything, it helped me because I know now where I'm going to retire. You know what I mean? Like, I don't question anything. I don't, I, I know where I'm at. I know where I'm going to be. And I have some, you know, I talk to a lot of those guys that's over there. Um, good friends, you know. Hey, I, I work at Walmart. They work at Target. Yeah. It's just, that's just the way it is. I, that's the way I look at it. And I hope, I hope that everybody else looks at it the same way. And I think they do. And anytime I've ever been in a group, of anglers, no matter where, when the anglers get together, the anglers get, you know, they're still anglers. You know what I mean? It's the, right. I think a lot of it has been kind of blowing up to be, I mean, it's, it's, it makes a lot of people, it gets a lot of podcast traffic. Yeah. Let's just say. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, uh, you know, you know me well enough. I'm not about the drama and I just, you know, I just want to fish. Just want to make a living. That's all I want to do. I, I think you're there. I think you're yeah. there. Well, yeah. there's a lot of perceptions about you. Um, but what is something that the public thinks about Jason Christie that you're like, ah, I'm not, it's not all that, or I'm not that. Well, um, fishing wise, first of all, everybody in the world right now seems like that they think 365 days a year when I go fishing all out there with the spinnerbait. <laughs> And it's the spinnerbait sales are good. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> dude, I can throw other baits. You know, I 
I look back and I'm thinking somebody, I did an interview the other day and he's like, hold on, you've won X number of events. You've only won what two on a spinner bait. And that, those were like recently. Um, yeah, I thought that's kind of funny, but other than that, you know, I just, what people don't know, I think some of them probably in it just, if I had to say one word, just simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need fancy, just simple. That may not, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like my, you know, I look at my boat. It's simple. You know, the, the things that I carry, you saw the tackle box that I carried up the Sabine. I mean, I could have put all those baits on the cell phone and not even used a couple of them, but I think I'm, I'm just simple. You know, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to answer that other than just being simple. Well, you're a lot more than simple, dude, because one of the things that I saw last year and I talked about it and I know you don't talk about it much because you're just not that kind of guy. But one of the coolest things that happened last year happened after you won on the Sabine river, a little kid named Jack came up and asked you to sign his trophy. Cause he won the trout derby or whatever we had catfish derby at the expo, which that all made sense. But right away you turned and asked him to sign your brand new elite series trophy. And, and, to me, that just seems so cool. Not just that you asked him, but with everything going on there, like yeah. that's the kind of thing that a lot of people drive away and they should, they think, Oh, I should have got Jack to sign it. That would have been cool. But to think of it and do it, like, tell me where did that well, come from? We met, uh, but you know, back when we went there, what, 2014, 13, when I was running with Edwin, he knew, um, a guy there, and we stayed with him, super nice people, uh, him and his wife. And and uh, so this year, whenever they announced it was at the Sabine and I was coming back, he's like, dude, I want you to stay at my house. I uh, I will pay for your gas all week. Like he just, we came in to dinner at night, steak dinner. I mean, just every night. So, and it was funny because I learned two things that event. Um, you know, I, I had a little bit of, uh, I didn't like the Sabine. I'd been there twice, maybe three times, three times. I think I had not got a check, you know, and just frustrated and stuff. I didn't want to be there. And whenever we were sitting there during practice and stuff, I kind of felt like, um, he got that vibe from me and he just said, and he's a, he's a preacher. Like he's supposed to come to the house and fish soon. He's like, you know, I can't tell you how glad that the people are that you guys are here. He goes, we literally, from the time you leave until the next time you come back, we look forward to you being here. And, and it's just like a party and, and everybody's in a good mood and you guys are kind of the highlight of this town until you come again. You know, and I, I, I literally thought about that a lot, like in depth. And I thought, you know, yeah, I need to quit being selfish and things like that and just, and that really changed the mood of me during practice. But after I won the event, obviously the whole house was, was excited and stuff like that. And, and I remember him asking me, he said, Hey, I got a kid that goes to church who has had it rough lately. And he would like to, uh, have you come over and take a picture and stuff like that. Well, when he shows up, he had been at the weigh-in. And they had some derby and he's carrying this trophy, you know, this tall. And I never even thought about it until we took pictures and stuff. And he walked up and he said, Hey, will you sign my trophy? And I signed it. And when I, to sign his trophy, I had to open my door to get a Sharpie out of the truck. And I saw mine and, you know, it was just like, Hey, and when I said, it, I was like, Hey Jack, why don't you sign my trophy? The people that we were staying with, they're like, no, no, you're, we don't <laughs> want that to happen. We don't want to ruin that. And I'm like, no, this is not this, this, uh, you know, this is everybody thinks it was for Jack. It's some of it was for Jack, but some of it's for me, you know, that's cause I, you look in that kid's eyes and I see the same thing that, that I, I was, that's, that was me 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So yeah, he was fired up and, uh, yeah, I hope that, and I think he will, you know, 
five years down the road or 10 years down the road, if he still, you know, remembers that, then it was worth it. You know, and I didn't, a lot of people probably thought, I, oh, I got home and wiped it off. I can go in and get a trophy right now. And it's got Jack written. And he has good penmanship too. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Whose yeah. signature was nicer, yours or Jack's? Definitely Jack. <laughs> Definitely Jack's. So. I, what you just said about orange is true, though. It's so weird. I've been there so many times. And I, I honestly, and I talked about it, on the, I go through the same thing where I get, and I'm like, what are we doing? You yeah. know, because because anglers complain about the size of fish and everything. And then you get there and you run into this person and that person that have been so kind to you so many times. You see the and you're like, we need to come here all the time the, because that that community just really is that special. Yeah. And, you know, you look at the Sabine, you look at the weights and you think, well, it's the fish is not that great. But that's what they have. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's what they, and, and I actually like tough events. I mean, I really do. But, you know, it's, I remember the first day that I ran up to Sabine. I was by myself. I didn't have a marshal. And I ran up and so you don't see anything driving up that river except was, well, there's one bend that there was a house up there. I say a house. There was civilization was on the side of the hill and i remember looking up there and seeing it well when i came back down the river that day i remember just kind of looking up there and when i got past it i heard gunshots boom 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 well i just assumed that you know they're probably trying to scare me or something but it was funny because the first day i go by and they're shooting i don't know if they were shooting at me or just shooting and then the last day they're all up there you know, there's four or five or six people up there drinking and waving them <laughs> when I go up and when I come back down. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're good people. And, and, uh, Dan and his family, the ones that we stay with, I mean, you just, and that's, that's the cool thing about my job and your job. You know, you meet people along the way, you know, heck, most people I talk to now are, are friendships made through fishing and this industry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible, I mean, I wouldn't, that's why I thought you guys were all so crazy for leaving. I'm like, I'm having the time of my life. What are they doing? <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad some of you come back. Um, serious question. And it doesn't even have to be today. It has to be career wise. What drives you more? The idea of success or the fear of failure? Fear of failure. You know, I, I don't feel like, and I say this respectfully and humbly, I don't feel like I have to win again i don't feel like um i have to do anything to justify anything you know but my job now at the point of where i'm at in my career is to represent yeah the group you know and to do things like jack you know and you know we do things big kids events in the summer that's my job now and you know, I don't put pressure. I put more pressure on myself than anybody else can. You know, and a lot of it comes from the, the people around me. I I don't want to win for me. You know, I want to win for her. I want to win for my parents because I see the look and my kids. You know, I see the look on their face and how proud they are. Dude, I mean, I am where I'm where I am. Like I said. My job is just to represent the sport and and hopefully, you know, make some kids happy along the way and teach them about fishing and and uh, but trophies, you know, that I I still want them bad, but I want them for the people around me and the sponsors. You know, it, I love that feeling after you win and for the guys that haven't won when they do win, I mean, it's addicting. You know, if 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 there was a price on that feeling, it would be. We wouldn't be able to afford it because everybody would want it, you know. And it's it's such a weird, you like an actual tournament victory. Like, I mean, I've never accomplished anything like what you've accomplished. But I remember like the first pseudo big tournament that I won around, and I remember it vividly because it because you know you dream one day I'm going to win this tournament. And I remember winning it and had to do some media stuff, and then I got in my truck and I was driving away. 
and my trophy was strapped and I was all by myself and my truck was still out of gas. And, <laughs> and I remember vividly because Van Halen's song came on and it was standing on top of the world for a little while. And I was like, that explains tournament fishing. <laughs> yeah, you're only on top until the next tournament. You know. And, and it's such a freaky, sh- like to, like you said, if you win once every two years, you are by far a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, it's such a uh, freakish. How do you stay positive in s- a sport with such a freakishly low rate of success? Well, that, I mean, you take somebody, uh, you know, that's won a bunch. You're going to lose. I mean, if you're the, if you're the best ever bass fisherman, you're still going to lose 80% of the time, 90. No, you're going to lose 90, 95% of the time. Yeah. And you're still the best. I mean, you have to have a tough mindset to be able to do that. You know, and that's why that was what was so, was so special about the win at the Sabine. I didn't think that I had won. You know, at uh, some of the other events, I kind of had a feeling after you catch one, you know, you're like, I think I might have got that one. Uh, but the Sabine, I really thought that I kind of blew it. So it was, and then coming back, you know, coming back to the Elite Series, you know, I wanted to win and, and uh, to be able to do it at a place that I'd never got a check. You know, it was just kind of like, punching the Sabine right in the gut and to overcome a negative outlook going into it. I mean, th- th- sounds like that event, not only it probably made you a better angler moving forward, just, just because of over, you know, there's no better example of overcoming it than going from why are we here to right. I just won. Right. And I, like I said, I have a different outlook, but I can remember driving down there, you know, Shanna was in my butt about the negativity and it was just like a stop and get gas and get back in and I'm driving. And, and of course I want to step back with the people around you. Sometimes you don't want to have high expectations. So you want to kind of, you know, you want to keep the expectations low because you lose 95% of the time. Um, but I remember going down there and saying, Hey, I, I feel pretty good about this. And, but I had a plan the whole time going down there and that was, to go where I went. Um, so I, I was, I kind of put a little hackney on that kind of, kind of snuck past them on that deal. Yeah, it was, it, it was pretty awesome to watch the job of professional fishing as you've, everybody's learned through this, even this interview, there is so many different jobs, yeah. which, 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 I mean, there's so many different feelings. Like you just said that addictive feeling of winning, what part of that job do you feel best in? You know what I mean? Like that this is where this is home. You mean uh, like which task in the, of the long list of tasks you do throughout a year as a professional angler? Is it, is it just fishing being by yourself in the boat? Is it the market is what part of it do you feel? Well, I think, I think as a whole, you know, the marketing side, the business side, you know, in 10 years, I have grown thousand percent. You know, you just do in this industry. You have to or you won't make it. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable at that. You know, we're doing some things now with some videos and stuff where I'm in front of the camera a lot more. Uh, and I'm going to get better at that. Uh, but still... I think where I'm comfortable, like the most comfortable for me is about one o'clock during a tournament day when I'm just fishing and I know that I need like just one or two more to, you know, to, to succeed in the day and and succeeding doesn't mean 30 pounds. It means, you know, staying up there where you have a chance to win. But I think it's that feeling right there that keeps me going every time it's it's what do i got to do to make an adjustment and here's the thing there's a lot there's a lot of times that i don't make the right decision right there but there's just something about that middle of the day when i got to dig in a little bit you know and really put the claws in the dirt to do something to make you you know to jump you above another 15 guys because when you do that you know that's more money it's more anger of the year points uh, just everything, you know, it just, and, and, and that's what people don't realize about bass fishing. A few of those grasp every year, 
take you from 30th and angle of the year to the top or 50th to 20th. You know, it's, it's not just one day. It's not just one event. It's, it's a whole season. So. Do you really not think you're good on camera? Well, I think that uh, there's things I can improve at. I think you're pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah. Well, let me tell you, whenever, not only once, but twice, when you drive home, when you drive from the lake to the Coliseum and you started the day in the Classic with a six-pound lead and you have a camera in your face the whole time, you kind of get where you can be around it, you know. I remember at Hartwell the last day when we got in, the camera guy, he put his camera down, put his seatbelt on, and they, they, you know, he kind of got his earbud and he tightened it up. And he, and he took it back down. He goes, hey, he said, the people at studio are wanting to know if it's okay if, they, if I could film this going home. He goes, I totally understand if you don't. And I was like, no, that's what I want you to do because I need to pay for what happened today. You know what I mean? I was like, I need to punish myself for what I did, you know, the stubbornness that I, that, that I showed for that day. So and the whole way, um, you know, you have all of these friends, you have all of these people. And, and I'm not saying that anybody didn't support me because everybody did. But at the beginning of the day, and then when you walk off the stage and I got to step over somebody scream, screaming Jordan Lee's name, you're all by yourself. You know what I mean? There ain't nobody else there. Even your family is like, oh, I think I'm going to go over here and talk to somebody else. So, and most of it's just leaving you alone. But that, that'll make you where you can be around the camera. It, yeah. And it, I mean, that moment sucks. Like, that's the part of the sport that is, I mean, I watch it every year, but you know, in every tournament, you know, when I'm screaming, so, like, I remember at the lat in, uh, Waddington when Corey Takumi won it and Corey's kicking stones and I'm like screaming stuff about Takumi and I'm looking through the mesh on the side and I'm watching Corey just stick kick stones all by yourself. And it's just like, but it's, it's like you say, almost you have to feel that like that pain drives you, I guess. Like, you know, I would assume that feeling is that, is that why you try to. It's just going to make it, you know, I asked myself why, why? Now, why has that happened twice? The, the one at Grand didn't hurt that bad. That was just, that was just, that is what it is. But the one at Hartwell, like I, I made a decision to knock it out in the first hour. I'm like, I don't want to win this thing. I want to, I want to be done by nine o'clock with 20 pounds. And, and I just, I, I was dumb. And then still, you know, losing a couple of fish, I lost by a pound, four ounces. Every time I catch a fish when I'm fun fishing and it weighs more than a pound, four ounces, I, I hold it up and I think to myself, that would have won the classic. But, you know, it just, uh, it was one of those just bad decisions. But what I was going to say is, it's just going to make it great when it happens, if it happens. You know, I mean, you're going to have to carry me off the stage if I, if somehow that I, uh, that I win. And I think it will. I mean, I've been close a few times. I just, you realize it probably. The fans may not. For you to win the lead event, the stars have to line up. For you to win the classic with the variables of the media, of all of the fans, for you to win the classic, the stars, the moon, the sun, the planets, everything has to line up. And I just had one star out of whack a couple of times. I, and I do believe you will win it. Like there's no part, like there's no part of me that, I mean, I'm going to tell you if you're leading it going into the last day, I'm not emceeing it unless you win it. Cause I can't, I can't do that again. <laughs> I, I think that if I do win one, it's, I can't be leading. I'm going to have to come from, from back because there's just going to be, Oh, that, that'll just be like, here we go. Again. I don't want, like if, if I think that I'm going to be leading after the second day, I'm going to let a fish or two go at the water. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really been a lot of fun though and i think that i think i've got a lot of loyal fans from those experiences you know what i mean i mean the i mean true 
like people that would come over and help me change a flat just because I let them in that truck driving home. Yeah. Whenever I could have said no. And you know, it's, it's, uh, gosh, I think about it a lot, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, uh, I mean, I do believe all those moments build though. I mean, I've, I've seen it happen over and over again. Hank Cherry, the most painful moments sitting on that stage watching him lose those fish. But the amount of people that wanted him to win last year and this year is so much more because they saw that. And and I could only, you know, it's, I'll, tr- I'll try to keep the media calm around you because that would probably be the worst. Well, like, the media is not the bad, and it's nothing bad because that's, that's what makes you, you know, some of these guys, you know, the best advice that I could give the other fishermen, especially some of these guys that are fishing around us, you know, these younger kids is the media is your friend. If you're going to make a living in fishing, you don't, if a writer calls you or if, if a guy walks up, you don't wait, you, he, that's what gets you a job right there. So, you know, you need to talk to those guys and, you know, there's nothing about it. I just, well, you know, I can remember at Grand, I got a high school coach that lives there. Good friend of mine, almost like my second dad. And he asked me if there was anything he could do. I said, yeah, I'd be nice if he could drive me back and forth. You know, and I knew he would enjoy that. And I said, on top of that, I said, I can't tell you what to do on the water, but it would really be great if I, if these fans would just give me a little room. Dude, I was catching them in the back of pockets. Hey. Yeah, I saw the video of you that James Overstreet posted is one of the scary, like, yeah. I'll, we'll find it posted on your YouTube channel. We'll find it posted on your YouTube channel because we're trying to drive a bunch of traffic to it. And we'll put it there after this goes live because it, now finish your story. Sorry. Yeah. So the first day wasn't that bad, but the second day I remember going into this pocket and just, I mean, I got boats just pushing me. I mean, it's almost like the water was coming up as I was going back in the pocket. Nothing. I mean, it's just everybody wanting to watch and I'm in these tight pockets and stuff. And anyway, we get in the truck, you know, I have the utmost respect for him, but I kind of slammed the door and he's like, well, how, you know, I seen you caught him. Okay. How, how was your day? I was like, dude, it wasn't worth it. I was like, how can you not keep these people away off of me? He said a hundred and he counted 122 <laughs> boats in one pocket. And that was where an overstreet took the video. He's like, I can't keep them off. You know, he goes, uh, GRDA can't keep them off. But I think it's those event, that event, though, that, like I said, I kind of, I got people following. And I feel like the people that's followed has, are still following. Because I tend to give them some drama about <laughs> once every two or three years. <laughs> Do you think it would ever get to the point that they'd shut down a lake for the class? Like, I mean, rowing regattas and stuff like that can shut down a lake. No. No, I think that would, it's never going to happen. No. And unless we have it on, on somewhere private and there's nothing that big, but no, it'll, it'll never happen. And, and honestly, I don't want it to, you know, that's, that's part of, that's part of being out there. I mean, if you the people that's never done it, I mean, you know, you're out there working and you catch one and, you know, you might have three boats over there. You might have 122, but when they go to rooting, kind of like playing ball in college you know it's it's you're like yeah now i know why i do this you know <laughs> yeah it, i mean i find that amazing that everything they like every takeoff we have when i show up i'm like like i even sabine not even the classic like every time i'm like what is wrong <laughs> like i am so thankful for those people but don't know what's wrong with them that they get up in the middle of the night yeah and, and to watch boats idle away <laughs> right and and with the live that we have now, you know, but I get it. You know, some people, they want to watch Hank Cherry or whoever. They, that's who they want to watch. But, man, if I would sit back, you know, even at the lake or something and just or at home and just watch it all on live. Yeah. You know, it's not the same, I guess. They want to be there like they feel. And I get that because I'll be honest Whenever, I mean, I'm not on the water that much anymore, but whenever I was always on the water doing coverage, it's a weird connection you get with the anglers with the, like, I mean, I'm sure you feel it with different me, like a cameraman that was with you when you won, you have a bond with that person forever. It, it's, it's, a you know, so I think that's what they're searching for. Yeah. 
Yeah, everybody's – it's it's funny. I mean, it's – there's there's a warm feeling out there when things are going good, you know, and and you feed off of that stuff. You know, your cameraman feeds off you. You feed off him. You feed off the spectators. You feed off the people on the bank. It's uh, it's it's, it's that's why I would not want the spectators to go away. Yeah. And I, and you know, I kind of feel like I'm getting better at uh, I don't want to say managing it, but I expect it to happen. So. You know what? You think about stuff like that. Hey, I need to save some stuff for the last day that I haven't fished. If I can, you know, just you kind of develop a plan. I, w- I wasn't that. Uh, I didn't know what was going to happen at Grand. I, I wasn't expecting that. You know, guys were like, people are going to follow you. I was thinking, well, you know, my uncle, my cousin, maybe my mom, four or five boats only a big deal. And then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, my goodness, do these people <laughs> not work? <laughs> You know, it's the Bassmaster Classic. It's it is a bizarre, bizarre uh, event, and and I cannot wait till the day that you hold that trophy because I I I believe it, and I know many. I mean, there's just no way, there's no way that the fish gods are that evil. Okay, you can't lead it as long as you have and not win it. I'm telling you, you're going to. Well, I'm gonna be playing, and that's the only thing I'll say. I I don't know if I'll win, but every classic that I fit fish from here on out i will swing because i am not scared to make that drive to the you know i'm not scared to do that so i'll be swinging do you do you worry that i mean it's obviously become part like you're saying every time you catch a fish that weighs one four you look at it do you worry that you're putting too much on your shoulders and how will you or is that shanna's job to manage your brain from exploding Uh I mean, I think, you know, you think about it, but once the, once the classic starts or even the elites there, you, I forget about that stuff. Now, you know, the last day and, and I got a lead, obviously you're going to think about it. You know, you take a football player at the same, everybody's going to think about it. If you don't think about it, you're not human, but no, I'll be fine. Cause I'm not scared to, I'm not scared to make that drive. I've made that drive twice. <laughs> what's, what's the, it's not a big deal to do it again. I don't want to do it again, but I'll just say that I'll be swinging. Well, I'm looking forward to watching it. One of the new things you're up to, not you new, you've been doing it for a long time, but really making a concerted effort. You're, you're going to become a YouTuber. Yeah. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. Jason Christie doing YouTube. You know, it's just one of those things. And I, you and I kind of talked about it before. I don't want to get outworked. And there's a lot of these guys doing that. Um, You know, and it's just a teaching opportunity. You know, I feel like that, that I can help a lot of people. And, and really to be absolutely honest at the end of the year, I want to have another box check for sponsors. You know, I want them to say he's doing everything that he can to promote our product, uh, you know, and to do it the right way. So, and we're going to do it. Just my way, you know, we're not, what? Gonna, we're not going to be crazy. We're not going to, we're going to just go fishing and teach and, and, uh, you know, we're going to see how it goes. We're, you know, we're going to do it for a year or two. The, so you probably know this whenever you have a cameraman or you travel with somebody like you have to have a special person because you spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. And fortunately, um, the cameraman that I have, I've worked with a lot before. He was at Lou's and Lou's moved and he, you know, he's working with Falcon and some other sponsors. But um, so I, he and I get along good and he's really good at his job. So we're just going to try it. We'll give it a year or two. And if I see it's something that I think that we can build on, we'll keep doing it. If not, we'll do something else, but we're going to do, Fishing, we might do some deer hunting. We might do whatever. So, so and what is like regular uploads, or what is the like? What are are you going to be doing it every week, or is it like only when you have time? Goal. That is our goal: is to do it every week. We had we've released the first video, and ironically, it came on a spinnerbait. You know how how do you open a YouTube series? You just got to go through a spinnerbait and catch seven pounder. You know, wow, a big one. So we wanted to do that, but 
what we're going to try to do is, is, you know, try to release one a week. Now, all of them aren't going to be great. You know, they're, they're not going to be, uh, some of them are going to be a lot more in depth than others, but, uh, you know, we kind of got started late in the year, uh, filming and stuff. So we got to build our library and, uh, There'll be some good stuff coming down the pipe. I'm sure. Do you feel you need to have this? I mean, this whole conversation, I felt really like you really feel you're not as good as others and you got to work really hard. Do you feel you have to keep that? I mean, you're pretty freaking good, dude. Just so you know. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I just don't want to get outworked. You know, and it's the same way. You might outfish me. You know, you might do, but you're not going to outwork. I mean, you're, you're not going to outwork me. I just, I don't think so. Same. I just, just how I do business. So I just want to give the other guys, I guess, a head start on the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, everybody. I, I never thought that I would do it. Ever thought I had no desire to do it, but you know, th things change and uh, yeah. And here's the thing. I fish any, I'm, if I, if I don't have a cameraman, half the time I'm by myself anyway. So I might as well throw a cameraman back there, do some videos, let everybody watch it. And hopefully they learn something. Yeah. No, oh, I'm sure they will. I mean, you've done a lot of cool stuff on, I know you were doing cool stuff on um, Facebook and stuff, you know, your random lives that would just show up out of, you know, on a Tuesday or yeah. whenever you were out there. And that's honestly, that's where the YouTube idea kind of came from is, is, you know, that was during the virus and, you know, Shannon and I talked about it. Brad Co boss talked about it. Like, let's just throw one together. And you throw it together and all of a sudden we look down and there's a thousand people watching at 10 o'clock. Amazing. And, but what amazed me the most was we would go back a week and that, and that Facebook live would have 50,000 views. So I'm just like, and then at the classic this year, I had a ton of people come and say, man, I really like, you know, the little videos that you do teaching the knot, you know, all of this stuff. I'm just, and that's at the classic this year. I was just, you know, I was just like, I think that we need to, you know, kind of check into this and see if it's something that, that, you know, will work for the brand. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to work out pretty good. Uh, I'm coming to get your jobs when I'm done. Are you really? No. Well, <laughs> dude, you could probably do my job a lot better than I can do your job. I don't want your job. I am still amazed that you can call 90 guys or 95 and not have a piece of paper in your hand and know how many tournaments they've won, rookie of the year, angler of the year. Like it amazes me. Well, some are harder to remember than others. <laughs> how, how, how much time do you spend studying that? I used to never, to be totally honest. When I first started on the elites, I never, ever did. Because, I mean, I honestly grew up. I, I was that big of a fan that I knew. And then as guys would add, it's real easy. You know what I mean? Because you're just adding a few. I did have to do a bit of study in the last number of years, I'll be honest. Um, but but it's honestly just because I look the way I look at you guys and your job, I'm like, they got so many moving pieces. And I have so much respect for people like yourself that literally, you know, laid it all on the line and took a lot of risks to get where you are. And I'm like, they wins are so rare. You know, those moments are so rare. And I kind of look at it like I want to be able to add to that. You know what I mean? In some way, like, I don't know that I add to any, but when they watch it, I want to, I don't, I guess, similar to you, I don't want it ever to look like I'm out work. So I just huff and puff and move around a lot. <laughs> People think you're working really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got to work hard. I know. How do you remember? How do you remember the combinations of like uh, baits and different? Like, it, I mean, it's just you love it, so it's really easy. Like, I think if you said, "Hey, you're going to work for the PGA," and you got to remember, I, I would suck at that because, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah do, what you, do what you love, and then you have a pretty good job, I guess. I don't know. I, I think so. I mean, it's worked out all right for. For both of us, actually, to be honest. Yeah, I really, I really can't picture anybody else doing it. So you just need to stay as long as I stay. All right. Well, let. I mean, I have some commitment issues with you. I got to be honest, but I mean, I'm slowly getting over those. And uh, 
I think we're good for a number of years uh, to come, but uh, dude, I really appreciate you doing this. Um, uh, I asked you to just have a normal chat and, and I think we really did. And, and man, you're a big part of the elite series. You know, you really, really are. And, and uh, I love that. This is what I, what I like about this. I love how people get, to, I mean, a lot of people see Jason Christie as this Terminator character and dude, you're one of the nicest people when you hear stories like what you did for that kid, Jack and stuff like that, you really are, you know, you're one of those people that some people say you don't want to meet your heroes, Jason Christie. If he's your hero, you want to meet him because, um, you're a good dude. You're making me blush. Yeah, I know. That was my plan. Look at him. Look at him blushing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's be honest. We recorded this the week before the mighty chiefs play the bills. And I will go on record right now to say we smoke. The bills, right? I hope so because I live with the Queen uh, Chief fan, so my life will be misery if they don't win. <laughs> Go Chiefs! Yeah. Go Chiefs! Jason Christie, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. All right, see you. Wow, thank you very much, Jason Christie, and what an open, honest, and interesting interview. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as as I did, but. For Christy to open up as much as he did, and really the coolest part of the whole thing to me, for those of you following along, and if you watch every week, maybe some of you picked up on it. Last week's guest, Jake Latondris, Bassmaster Cameraman, told the story about driving back with Christy and having to tell him that we're going to go live. And to hear the perspective from Jake last week and then Christy just a week later was super cool and uh, about the only thing that would make that cooler is if I was professional enough and prepared enough that I set it all up and you know I asked those questions no it just it just happened but to hear the perspective from both individuals that were in the vehicle at the time um, was was really cool and uh, I can't thank Christy enough for opening up and, and being as honest as he was about the pain of of losing a big event like that and um Man, that, that was a cool interview. And when you think about how close christie has been, I, I honestly believe this. It's just chapters to the story. You know what I mean? Like those close seconds are just chapters to the story that will make the moment when he wins a classic that much more exciting. Um, it's cool, man. It's a cool sport, a cool show. And I thank Jason Christie for making it that. I wish I had more to do with it but i don't but you have a lot to do with it you guys have literally i mean we're over seventy five thousand subs now because of you guys the amount of growth that's happened around this show around this channel is amazing and i thank you for it and all i ask you to do is just drop a like and give a sub i mean i know it sounds juvenile and foolish but it really does make a difference enjoy being and i'll see you next week thanks for watching Please like, comment, and subscribe because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?